record. And I'm going to go live on Facebook. Any second. Oh. Keeps asking me to log in on Facebook. It's the most annoying thing ever. But Mark, you can start because I will do this as we go. All right. Well, welcome everybody to Lip Balm uh, number 98. Um, today we are featuring Joseph Lees, uh, Megan Bryceth, Michael Todd Ed uh, Edgerton, and Sheila E. Murphy. Um, but before we move to the feature, um, we'll hear a little bit something from one of our absentee um, co-founders um, and, and, and co-presenters. Um, Jonathan Penton, uh, who founded Unlikely Stories in 1998. Uh, since he's lent his editorial and management assistance to a number of literary and artistic ventures, such as Mad Hat, the New Orleans Poetry Festival, Rigorous, and Big Bridge. In 2005, he founded Unlikely Books, which publishes three to five books of poetry a year. He's organized literary performances and performed himself across the United States. His poetry books are Last Chap, Blood and Salsa and Painting Rust, uh, Prosthetic Gods and Standards of Sanity, and also the free e chat book Backstories, which you can download from Argotist eBooks. So I have one of Jonathan's New Orleans Sculpture Garden Ekphrastic poems, and they're quite short and pithy. I quite like them. Oh. This one's on um, Lynn Chadwick's uh, Sitting Frig Figures 2, which is um, in bronze. So it's called Sitting Figures 2. I have been faceless now for 10,000 years. It is neither punishment nor reward. Look at me. I promise I can look back. Everything works within me as well as inside you. I have lost something you need, but I remain content. Have you seen my arms, my legs, my breasts? They're a little unusual, I grant you. I'm not afraid to be proud of them. And so that's Jonathan's ekphrastic poem um, on sitting figures from the New Orleans Sculpture Gardens. Back and to you. now we have from Cassandra herself, who, who just read on behalf of Jonathan. Um, Cassandra is an award-winning writer, scholar of prose poetry and professor of writing and literature in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, her most recent books of prose poetry are Pre-Raphaelite, Leftovers and Fugitive Letters. She's currently writing a book of prose poetry on the atomic bomb with funding from the Australia Council. Cassandra co-wrote Prose Poetry, an introduction, and the anthology Australian Prose Poetry. She's also commissioning editor of Wesley magazine. Thank you. And surprisingly, given my obsession with prose poetry, I'm going to read a prose poem. Um, so, yeah, this is in a, a recent book that I published. At first, it was a small haunting. Fingers on my collarbone, fleshy fingertips on my spine. One morning, there was a handwritten note in my journal, a remnant of tequila in a glass on the sink. On cold nights, the heater would start and I'd wake to an outline pressed into the doona next to me. Later, I would hear the fluttering of book pages, a soft murmur near my ear. On the final night, I left my journal, the bottle of tequila and three books on the table, turned the heater on and stretched out naked. On the Duna. So I'm going to introduce the incredible Mark Vincennes, who I know many of you know. Please join in if you know his bio because it's known and loved um, in lip balm circles. Mark Vincennes is an Anglo-Swiss American poet, a fiction writer, translator, editor, publisher, designer, multi-genre artist and musician. He has published 20 books of poetry, including more recently Einstein Fledermaus, The Little Book of Earthly Delights, a brief conversation with consciousness. There might be a moon or a dog over in my side of the world with gazebo books in Australia, 39 wonders and other management issues forthcoming from Spite and Dival and the Pearl Diver of Irin Mani forthcoming from White Pine Press. An album of music, ambience and verse, Left Hand Clapping is forthcoming from Tree Torn Records. Vincenzo is also a prolific translator and he's translated from, come on, everyone knows this one, German, Romanian and French. He's published 10 books of translations, most recently Unexpected Development by award-winning Swiss poet and novelist Klaus Mertz with White Pine in 2018 and which was a finalist for the 2016 Cliff Becker Book Prize in Translation. 
His translation of Klaus Mertz's select, uh, he's currently working on a novel entitled The Age of Occasions. He nearly did Klaus's um, uh, translation multiple times because I lost my spot. He's currently working on a novel entitled The Age of Occasions. Vincennes is editor and publisher of the Stella Mad Hat Press and publisher of New American Writing. He has, join me, lived all over the world from Brazil to China to Iceland to India. He was born in Matilda Hospital on the peak in Hong Kong, but now lives on a farm in rural Western Massachusetts overlooking Herman Melville's Greylock Mountain, which I believe he scaled the other day. And where there are, I know, I know you're waiting for the last line, which changes every week. There are more upland pills nails, changeable mantle slugs and sculpted glyphs than people. And I did Google them and I'd rather be a sculpted glyph than a changeable mantle slug. Uh, Mark, but I've had my lesson this morning on all kinds of animals in Western Massachusetts. So please read for us. Well, this poem is called Artificial Intelligence. Um, and it comes from uh, a book I'm working on called A Splash of Cave Paint. Uh, this poem was actually just recently published in uh, the UK's fortnight nightly review, Artificial Intelligence. They say the autumn will come with white sails. My mouth is always wide open to praise. Eternal youth is a gift from all that brings joy, the clouds of the gods. With a sweet tension, they lighten the load. How can there be bad love, you say? It all vanishes in dust and smoke, you say. Even those pressure pads leave something in doubt. In no uncertain words, the olive trees have seen most of your eras, your changing of the guard, your wax seals and notary publics, with your digital signatures and a fanny pack of tricks, with your theatres and organic bistros. I wish I had a daughter whose name was Esmeralda or Josephina, a landscape of diversity to survey a pledge, a ledge to lean upon, or a mantle, or a lintel. And that Friday night, when pines turn into palm trees, honestly, I prefer to circle the earth and consider which one of these galaxies will soon be singing. And I am now delighted to begin with the first of our featured readers today, uh, and that is Michael Todd Edgerton. Uh, who is a proud gay boy poet of lyrically fluid gender and gender alike. He's the author of Vit uh, Vitruvius Hyde, uh, Vitruvius Hyde from Lavender Inc. Uh, Todd's poems have appeared as the winner of the Boston Review and Five Fingers Review contests. And in Denver Quarterly, Eoch Interim, New American Writing, Posit, Sonora Review, Vault, and many other journals. He's received scholarships from the Broad uh, Breadloaf and Napa Valley Writers' Conferences and a McDowell Fellowship this summer to work on his latest project, Sissy and Nikki Unreciprocated, a novel from novel verse prep play. Todd holds an MFA from Brown, a PhD from the University of Georgia, uh, currently teaches at San Jose State University and serves on the poetry editing team for Seneca Review. You can find him swishing along the streets of San Francisco and online at mtodedge.com. Um, welcome, uh, Todd. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Joseph and Sheila and Megan. So delightful to read with you guys. Um, <clears throat> Mark, can I, or Cassandra, can I share screen? Um, I'm gonna make you a co-host and then you'll be able to. Okay. <clears throat> so you should be able to now. Okay. Hooray. And you can uh, hear me all right, right? We Definitely. I can see this and I can hear you. So it's perfect. Awesome. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the project I'm, I'm currently working on. So I'm going to read a little bit from it. And um, I'm not going to read, it's a kind of verse play um, as the subtitle plays on. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to show you, you can see some of the stage directions and, um, and uh, name 
tags and whatnot, but um, I'm just going to kind of read the sort of poem main parts here. Um, but I want you to see what it looked like. Sissy Nikki Unreciprocated, novel verse play, starring Sissy Nikki, a skinny white working poor, don't say trash, bitch, mostly singer mother raised, fey gay boy making good on his brain, studying theories of love, life, and death on scholarship at the big university, but with no idea of his own worth. Hashtag stares and avoids. <clears throat> David, Nikki's haughty classmate and unbeknownst to the mask only David himself, Nikki's true love, oh, if only. Hashtag just a normal guy. Coco, a trans woman and Nikki's best friend and classmate. She sings amazingly and wants to be a pop legend. Hashtag get gaga gone, Beyonce. Queer voice over at all, AKA QVC, our wannabe poet MC and unvirginal guide, our any aged or ageless mage, too tired not to try. And of course, the occasional uninvited guest that happenstance will bring. Vina Four. <clears throat> Sissy Nikki's monologue on the heteropatriarchal matrix of intelligibility, or growing up in bumfuck, a sissified fay, or as they say, a faggot out the pickup truck, window whooshing by, always a pickup, head stuck out like a dog's tongue toddling along the sidewalk, campus side, freshman year only just out, running over the recess playground, hands up like an angel being arrested, being laughed at, being Farrah Fawcett, or was it Jack, Jacqueline K. Jackson Smith running girly from the explosion, the gym teacher at least tells them to stop at least one time, and time again I go next door to play with Jennifer, her dolls, her Barbies, not her baby dolls, who wants to be a baby, her slender gleaming ballet footed model like one Barbie like all the glamour girls on TV, eventually I ask my dad for my own, he stands on one side of my bedroom door frame, me just inside, he raising his voice to me. It ain't natural, boys don't play with dolls, but eventually they buy me one thinking, I suppose, you know, that it'd be the just a phase thing and best to light it, let it burn out. Instead, I play with Barbie and Ken inflamed in her hot pink Corvette, a girl's gotta have a boy toy, you know? All the golden glamor girls do racing down the hall when he comes home from work shut my bedroom door run race race run across the ocean of lawn waving from fourth grade to my dad's pickup waiting for me i know to beat me like they promise almost every day kendall jeff and jason are you gay with brian no i knew from the way they'd asked to say though i had no clue what they were asking only know to run run down the hall Stuff her under all the other toys at the bottom of the box or furthest darkest old closed curtain corner when my cousins drop by unannounced and Ken gets on top, like Luke on Leia, like Leia, I prefer Han, never solo, no, a girl's gotta. And like Leia, she gets pregnant, stuff a marble under her dress, like the women on my mom's soaps, when, my, when men lie under the covers on top of them and kiss them, and Barbie's dress lies tossed to the side, spotted with sunset, blush lips, all over its folds of faux chiffon sky, spinning, spinning, spun, and the next year he runs for the hills with a woman with a normal son. So lucky, I guess. So lucky to be rid of them. So lucky no one ever actually hit me, but maybe it would have been better. Maybe I would have learned my lesson, learned how to fight back. <coughs> Scene one to one, Sissy Nikki on Mano a Mano monogamy game. Monogamy, boy please. These words he speaks only to his fantasy scenario of David Lothario, strings stinging him long, hard, your poles no flag for planting, no matter how loverly it billows, this candy ass taint no man's moon landing. He tosses at his dreamed up image of David's two-faced bleeding, only ever you already prowling, eyes rolling at such remarks as Mark, Sissy's laudably libertine rebel latitude. David, such a bore of traditional cognition. Oh, but Nikki's heart, 
at such altitudes wants David, wants all his want, all his alone and quite, quite all to spite himself. Such bullshit, Nicky spits, railing under his brain coat. Those bourgeois notions of ownership of love, of the bitter patter familius of our too familiar ward will marching over our arched, our aching bodies stripped, our thought feels pawed and caked, even our most privatized inked with wall-striped prints. Oh, this he knows to be true, and still, the poor thing doesn't have a clue what he wants or what, <clears throat> what he wants, or what's the what. For all his fa la 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 la, he's fa la 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 phone all the more. <clears throat> Scene 88, mirror, mirror on the stage. Open on Nikki denuded in the fog of the morning's full length, barebacking the audience, post shower, QVC front and center in a towel, Coco downstage left. Nikki's face a grimace, his gaze convexes to shun his reflection, the hand that holds the hand that withholds, neither surface nor substance. In its duplicity, no body fully appears. In this half-steamed glass, a shower of buried rage at what cannot be changed or won't, neither face nor stare. I wonder how Coco feels, I'm the penis she once said, Ghost-faced, Mars, her mirror. I wish I could with fairy dust transmatter her into that exact body she wants. I feel a not discontented indifference to mine. It's the rest, tattered and suspended, remains that rests, remains, neither sir nor sub. No, I know that's not the same, but maybe. It's all any one of us should want. What should in want? Body strange, whose condition is hallucinatory. All want, hallucinatory. Alienation, a perspective, our only perspective. Indifference, all anybody, any cis body can hope to feel. Cue fairy dust, fairy dust showers the stage. And a fair dusting for myself, for a body, a body I want, wanted as is, without pressing it to a mold, resistance to training, paining to betroth, to betroth to, come to be, to be beheld in, a man befitting the, that very mold, bolted to the idea of being made, neither surface nor, as if from clay from stone instead of this reedy wisp, and a dusting to molt me of this skin in want of its capture, a model man of a kind that eludes its capture, the kind of man I can never be, surfeit of surface, and so the man I want will never want me. What stingy and stinging hypocrisy. I can't seem to release, to relieve myself, feckless as peckless, but this penis, this strange condition I'm not wholly at odds with. Lucky me, and luck it is, enmeshed in dumb happenstance, pricked out as we all are to be, strung along, happily as haplessly, this edge of flesh. And I think for time's sake, I'll stop there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Todd. That was wonderful. Uh, and next we have from Sheila E. Murphy, who is the recipient of the Gertrude Stein Award for her book of letters to Unfinished Jay, which came out with Green Integer Press in 2003. Uh, Sheila's book, titled Reporting Live from You Know Where, won the Heine Ku Poetry Book Prize competition from Meritage Press and Expressed Finland. In 2020, Luna Bisonte Prods released Golden Milk, Broken Sleep Books brought out the book as if to tempt the diatonic marvel from the ivory. Initially educated in instrumental and vocal music, uh, Sheila is associated with music and poetry. She earns her living as a management consultant and researcher and holds the PhD degree. She's lived in Phoenix, Arizona throughout her adult life. Welcome, Sheena. 
Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the nice introduction. I'm delighted to be here. Um, I'm going to read from two collections today. Uh, the first, Golden Milk, and John Bennett and Kathy Bennett are here. Uh, they published it in 2020, and just a couple of selections from it first. I used to be a person. I used to be a person. I was interesting. I used to be, and now I plod. I plod through basic obligations that shift, constantly shift, as if there were no stasis. The stasis I so love that tunes me to attunement, variegated and stilt free and maybe luminous, still luminous. I used to want to dry out in the sand light where the bathing suits were scarce and I could breeze with all the sun, breeze, I could think, I could feel pulse, your pulse. I could be wooden or just flex and I could read myself into the reeds and reading and the dimples of the quasi light would beam their tiny, tidy little beamlets so the bounty was a thin young overtone about to burst into a bluster or a breast or even joyously foul language pretty as a rap tone in the alley sunlight. Think about it. How can we still blush if there is only nothing there? And another from that same book, you are the better fraction of affection. Please do not forget, you are the better fraction of affection. And even when it's raining, please do not allow yourself to think that gray is real. Gray is a symptom of amnesia for the sun. Please remember that I love the halo that is always shining as your life that hovers just above this life, that brings my life to light, that is your light. Remember how you light the very breath of living. Please remember that gray is a mere fiction. Rain forgets to shine and simply splays across the streets and makes it hard to drive. Remember you are vivid in imagination that is mine. You are the better fraction of affection that resides in me. Remember that a moment is as good as the eternity we're promised every day by someone we cannot hear well enough. You are the sunshine, sunlight, and the homonym of joy that lives across my life. And I beseech you, hear yourself continually blossoming along my heart. Do not forget you are the better fraction of affection. Thank you. See, I, I say thank you quietly because I look at you and I watch your hands and I don't hear you and then I don't hear me either because I'm quiet. All right, now I'm going to read several pieces from a new forthcoming collection called Permission to Relax, which I decidedly have needed and continue to need. And so I'm going to read several of different types that will be forthcoming, I hope within a year. Romance defects. Diplomacy's a wash. Give the Gideon a giddy up, switch plates, switch teams, replenish cavities with Morse code. Tremble near me, I am glistening. Speak truth, report the cortex jimmied as a lock. One temple or two, one template or too much grasp. I told you I would love you without words. I gave my word and that was Thames speed toward the muck left holding truck tires. Let me see. I think we were once twin tucked, twin tucks lemon lines away from sweet. You took my face into your sense of hearing plot go dark. Sparse winter formed a glaze across the upstate the upstart blazes. Now I lay me dormant as a spot. The clock taps shoulder length and hairlines fracture plot. I think the story was a maze and you, my ink blot, told the tale of me, Tutsal, where I would whisper your soft name, the frame of it, the hemline brushing tile. Remember who my heart has been named after and allow me place cards to remove the absence. Should be as a form of petrified endorsement. 
flame on framework over time to rights, I take my game plan home with me at night. You have disturbed what you disrobed by heart. I limit glad, you mood me. You awaken practice like a music stand. I hear the metronome of you come hither and the wash of seas. I want to arms control your depth. You wheel the ferris into scrap. You capstone my amenities. You wrap my heart around, you wrap your heart around my hope. I leap apart from years and years go by. They write their tickets, hierofare. They boast, we're toast. We know more than we scope out of the weeds, these rumored flowers feased and creased. The moment I adopt your sight, I am in line. The, the moment I apprendi your victuals, we can safety priest our home. It is a combed, unlikely sourdough. It is a roast. I want your down low to be host. Thank you. I'm going to read a high bin because how could I not? I spend at least a third of my life writing high boom. I might as well tell you that I started that little business around April of, 18, of 1984, uh, at which point I found in Sulphur Magazine, Six High Boon by John Ashbery. And I thought, hmm, I was at a hotel as I was working for a hotel company at the time, the corporate office, I was off at some location and I thought, I'll write some, I think I wanna do this. And then I guess I just never stopped. So this is called a chestnut cap. How invisible to the young, the remnants of a thousand choices deign to hold the skin in place. A swelling around thought until new breathing dresses precedence in finery. The frost will rise to light. Embrace thus present tense as the thin switch takes some petals to the land. A thought of walking where the sparrow tones form repetition thin to summer as plump snow in the opposing season. How does now become instinct? One learns to discard the compass, observe and then let go. Around me lives the window. Of my making speaks the stalwart guide into a perfect microphone, as though one bore capacity to rinse the night and come forth clean. How many daylights fold into pure, pure, pure dream? Cinders in the driveway, here comes morning, fresh from sleep. Why I love introverts. <clears throat> They insist upon a distance that allows us both to breathe. They listen without turning sour. They are so plural, there is room for me. They resist the urge to interrupt this program. They may or may not speak. They look good in clothes and out of clothes. They arm wrestle indifference without showing their hand. They play an instrument that need not be played. They refrain from joining a religious order without thought. They pray the offertory anyway. They take walks in the common gardens and become part of the scenery. They rehearse being unnoticed. They readily afford a natural poverty. They effortlessly hold my hand from Mars. Thanks. Thank you. Another high boon titled Speaking to a Saint. She has walked the mountain and absorbed the Mariposa lily, miniature woolly stars, as chuparosa and desert marigolds sing to eyesight. She protects me from my guilt. The fragrance of the blooms is tidy, and her footsteps keep respectful distance from these life forms. How is water any more than forms of light responding to the seasoning and breath? All speaking leaves the trap of manners, and I listen to the story of her flight from plain brown earth. The atmosphere reveals another pathway. We divide our thoughts among assorted answers. 
How do living things release all living things from being fastened to an anchor point? The windows do no justice to their views, and miniature flowers cloister definitions far from what appeared another fate. Roots imperceptible, the hue of wine perhaps, another daylight whispered in the call. I'm going to close with winter pantoum. This, this is, thank you for the snaps and the claps. Uh, this is, uh, I every year I write a uh, piece for the new year and I send it to all kinds of people. And uh, this one's titled Winter Pantoum. It's a somewhat recent one of the new year poems. It is the pantoum form. I, and of course that's lines two and four become lines one and three in the succeeding stanza and we roll down the hill and have a merry time. Winter is a moon, a breezeless shine intoned along fixed darkness. Any day now, sweet, tall night, a blankness made of nothing else. I dream light into empty space. A long fixed darkness, any day now, sweet, tall integers take form, are clocked toward midnight. I dream light into empty space, a virginal repose warm as a loved cat. Integers take form, are clocked toward midnight, distant accordion handful of semitones, a virginal repose warm as a loved cat, pronouncing flux as light turns crisp, cool breath. Distant accordion handful of semitones, half steps fill the dizzy night, pronouncing flux as light turns crisp, cool breath. No matter what occurs, I feel the safety of your back. Half steps fill the dizzy night. Imagine reverence unforced as blushing sight. No matter what occurs, I feel the safety of your back. Intention matters, lasts beyond mere fact. Imagine reverence unforced as blushing sight. The limber creatures correspond to sketches slight. Intentions mat intention matters, lasts beyond mere fact. As insolence is washed, we learn new flight. The limber creatures correspond to sketches slight. Cool colors obviate geometry at night. And as insolence is washed, we earn new flight. Locations broken unify insight. Cool colors obviate geometry at night. A blankness made of nothing else. Locations broken unify insight. Winter is a moon, a breezeless shine in tone. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. And uh, next we have from Megan Bryseth, who is the author of the chapbook Zia from Mrs. Maybe Press and co-author of the chapbook The Longer You Stay Here from Featherboard. And is finishing her first full length collection Sun Blue. Uh, Megan's poems have appeared in places like Parentheses, Rise Up Review and Sparkle and Blink. She works as an educator and lives in San Leandro with her wife, son, dog, cats, and plants. Welcome, Megan. Thank you, Mark. Um, thank you, Cassandra. It's so great to be here. Um, Todd and Sheila, that was incredible. Sheila, can I add, be added to your New Year's mailing list? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and Joseph, yeah. <laughs> so thrilled in advance to hear you read today as well. Um, so I have eight poems to read to you. They all take 30 to 45 seconds. Um, so this should take seven and a half minutes. Um, and the first one is called Kindling. Tires on rain, salt bath on hip knot, my eyes a glint at night, my dress on the line goes dry from its edges, reveals a damp ghost, my homebody bumps an invisible fence, my moor, my homebody cups my own skull where I hope to rain, eyes on the paths of ants. This monster craving rain and cake makes her clock of the sunlight changing on redwoods. Each persistent lung bellows the fire in a rhythm till it flares. This next one's called Lineage. 
My witch wrote my whole back in a twist, her tempo, my treasure, my homebody frantic and stone in my throat, her space, her hunger and itch, her crackle from tissue left nest in my bird brain. My witch, my panic, my perch on a roof, my witness, old, sharp claws and bird face. The stone in my throat speaks in relief, the fear old, relief where my blood moves. My hands are soft on the eggs they crack. Soon the moon will be new and gone. I fear I'll go soft when I catch what I chase. So I hedgehog my heart, stay super busy delving its cracks with tentacles trained to read threats all day. This next one is called Mufflers and Birdsong. Feeling too good where everyone accelerates. We wake to the schedule, radio, skid, and breeze. We arrive by light, follow the crooked laws, but try not to take their shape. Try keeping our shadows on, try to shape our shelter, shape our nature, shape every year of weather. Our night fur trapped in the loop of the song on repeat. We keep being different while the same sun jitters inside and sets and I get the kind of sadness where memories won't take. Mushrooms appear overnight. We freeze dance. We accidental headbutt. We remember sweat. We sleep past the stop sign. We're halfway through. This next one is called Clock Always Off. My game has me save up lives and spend them to play more game. I wander a repetition while my tea goes cold. My mother's cells, my sister's, my son's cells travel my body, establish lines, haunt my gut voice, and scale the days between their nights, 13 moon months, 49 work weeks. The reversible seascape so imprinted on my eyes takes longer to look at each time. Gets me close to feeling, nearly feeling the same water that slaps at all our insides, slapping our insides. And either way, all this air between us and work. My brain, a water plant runs me, who's all air, thinking to touch everything at once. Uh, this one's called Ease in Darkness. It's moving dust, like my mood of a day or a whole year of cleaning. I slide a window open, time my mind to the pace of the rain. Leaves blow across the window, their shadows move in my room. Momentary far off radio, airplane, dog sigh, scrape and throb of the wound in my mouth belly full of liquid and pudding churns with pills. Tingle of caffeine, tight chest. Sometimes I forget love made my body, forget I could sing. A hum makes a body sound and rejoins the hum toned by a handful of ears. I am not the voice in my head saying too much, too little. The voice in my head says, relax you lazy beast, it's all too much. I am silent as the universe, distractible as a child. I am as healthy, as sick as the world. What if there is no waste? We coalesce for a time and use ourselves up. Three more short ones. Um, but this one does have a long title, which is put your forehead to mind so our tender third eyes can speak. Our ancestors surely never imagined us, and I can't imagine the real future either. Silence. Arms back to braid my own hair by feel. Snarls bind the strands, eyes relax, hands taut, lest the whole thing go slack. Whatever wind roughens the water's surface, it howls. What would you show them? Trees breathe our breath. I leave for a week and the trees mark the time. Yellow and purple leaves turn the paths brilliant. 
redwoods haven't even blinked. Some gifts aren't meant for us to keep. If only we could teach them the way they teach us. If only we could reach them. Everything grows in my mother's garden more than she intends. I learn to pace the land and work, ignore my achy body. We clean up the leaf fall and send it to compost. We thank the work for making us strong. I have two little short ones to finish with. Um, this one is called Room to Weave Threads. And it was written in Chicago. Shout out to my Chicago friends who are here today. I was self-taught how to self-soothe and did a patchy job. I turn on the static sound of water and climb under something heavy, a chant that makes it safe to sleep, a list of words, a chain to count, to make up time. Words made beads on an endless string. Words, beads, me, the string. And this last one um, features a toddler. Her name is Ingrid um, and features a dog. His name is Louie. He's sleeping through these poems. Um, this is called Intend to Breathe. I lower the elevated wound and wait for the wave of blood to settle. Stand for the heat to wash my face and cool. We can give ourselves time to give ourselves instructions. The dog and toddler and I do a downward dog. Everything chaotic goes still. I know more or less. Motion sickness comes more easily beyond the duration of my opinion. And I know the remedies for the effects of the remedies for the effects of my cells on a planet that turns. The effects that resist, the resistance that turns. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Megan, that was fantastic. And Louis is still asleep. Louis, there he is. <laughs> Mostly asleep, yeah. <laughs> uh, next, we we hear from um, Joseph Lees, who helped make this event happen. Thank you so much. Um, and Joseph's critically acclaimed books of poetry include The Body Ghost from Coffee House, Testify from Coffee House, and The Broken World from Coffee House. Um, uh, Joseph's poems, Broken Joseph's poems, Broken World for James Salty and Send My Roots Rain were anthologized in post-modern American poetry and Norton anthology. Joseph's poem, Broken World, was also anthologized in the best American poetry. Uh, and his poem, Free Again, Why Don't People, was published in the New York Times. Marjorie Perloff wrote, the poems in Joseph Lee's Broken World are as cool as they are, as, pa uh, as they are passionate, as soft-spoken as they are indignant, and fiercely romantic as they are formally contained. Joseph has complete command of his poetic materials. His poems are spellbinding in their terse and ironic authority. Yes, the reader feels when she, he has finished. This is how it was and how it is an exquisite collection. Of the body ghost, David Shapiro wrote, jo Joseph has been making an American Buddhist poetry and he is as maximalist as flesh and bone. He gives me the sensation that poetry is in the gleaming hands healing and grasping and letting go. He is the future of poetry. Joseph's poetry is also collected at Penn Sound, the Poetry Center at San Francisco State University, uh, KQED, NPR, the Scottish Poetry Library, the Poetry Project, Bay Poetics, the Angry 31st Anniversary Poetry Anthology, and many more. Um, and Joseph has, has read at numerous colleges and universities, He's received the Academy of American Poets Prize and numerous grants and awards and poetics from Columbia University, Brown University, Harvard University, and the California College of the Arts. Joseph is a professor of writing and literature at California College of the Arts. Welcome, Joseph. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Mark uh, and Cassandra and the absent present Jonathan for, uh, for doing all that you do with Litbaum and so many wonderful readings and for having us, having us be a part of it. Um, thank you to, to, of course, to Sheila and, and Todd and Megan for uh, joining me 
uh, at this at this reading means the world to me. Um, I am going to begin. Um, so there's a story about Towns Van Zant. Everybody knows Towns Van Zant. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's you know. It's either Towns Van Zandt or Bob Dylan. It depends on whether you ask Steve Earle or not. But, it, but Towns Van Zandt writes very, very beautiful, very, very sad songs. And uh, somebody said, uh, play your funny songs. And he said, these are my funny songs. So I feel a little like that today. Um, I've been working on a project that is, um, you know, it's, it's the title is not learning to die in the Anthropocene, but it could be. Um, anyway, I'll just start um, and and forgive me if, well, try to forgive me. Um, the first poem, the first poem is called Next. And walls of flame and walls of flame, you spin the spin, you go insane, you eat the light, you eat the pain, fire tsunami, birds on fire. Hard blue night saw moon branches, you walked around like shame. And heat domes and dying, dying in the forest. And night falls down the stairs, and night falls down the stars, and walls of flame, and walls of flame. Fire tsunami, birds on fire. Uh, the next poem is Please Never Die. I am the lie in the throat of the eye, and I am the fire. The animals, the animals are dead, are dying. I wanted everything, the sky is fire. Panic, corpse light, soft and soft air, soft air. The animals are dead. I am the lie in the throat of the eye, and I am the fire. And uh, the next one is called In a Field. I changed the distant language of the rain, the brown and red leaves and the autumn gray. I wrote the splintered aspect in the wind. I wrote the splintered aspect in my mind. I wore the rain that rose and fell like light. I wore the snow that piled up by the gate. I wrote the secret number on my hand. I write the secret number in my eye. I thought the thought of every thought but one. I dreamt the dream that dropped me in the sun. The next poem is for my father. It was written, uh, it, it, a lot of it was written, it was re reworked, it was revised later, but a lot of it was written um, during the final um, days and, and weeks of my father's life. It's called Riding Death. He was wild, a little wild. He's dying, you can't exhale. He's dying, he's asking why you love him. Lost highway, kisses that we share across the sky. He is the drunk lane, the mayor, drunk lake, drunk in the lake. He's so tired and he can't what? My father just feels Sidney Bechet, heart crane, crazy cat. Now he doesn't have any. He gives life, kisses that we share across the sky. Lost highway, the book will save the book. Oil will kill the world. He's just trying to see, pay attention. He said, he said, joy, he said, feel this blue green voice. He said, violet blue wind pushes, river light birches, lost highway. He's dying in a town full of rabbits. He's dying, lying on the couch, lost highway. He hates sentimental slop. Hold his hand, he's from Coney Island. He's tougher than you. He says, when I squeeze your hand, I'm squeezing her hand his mother in the room, his mother's me. Tell him, tell him your mother loves you. Lost highway, 
Branches, paradise, are you blue? Are you green? Are you fire? Are you gold? Have you come? Have you come to sing to me, to sing to me? Lost highway, drunk like coins, like coins. Our lifestyle is wrecking the planet for Christ's sake. She's drunk like a gold coin. He's drunk like a gold coin. The TV says the TV. Farmers are farmers. Corporations eat them. Rabbits are perfect. There was always all this death. There was always a photo, a photo and money. Rain in the street, a face and a photo of money. Ice and the river, lost highway. Blue night comes. No, no one. Nobody dies. Nobody loses. Lost highway. Where is the distance? Where are the gym shoes? Where are the toenails? Where is the pain? Where are the toenails? Please stop this screaming. Please breathe my news flash. My eyes don't fit. Lost highway. Joy could. Blue fire. Torn blue. You. Dear one. Dear smart shining you. Dear you. My father's what? My father's rain becoming rain. Lost highway. Soft wind like a road. Done. I wrote done. I tried to write don't. 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 Um, the last poem I'll read today uh, is for my friend James Asatli. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about James and then I'll read the poem. Uh, just sorry, just a moment. Yes, here we are. When I met James Asatli in 1991, he was completing his novel, Hejira. By the spring of 1992, when he graduated from Brown with his MFA, James had grown increasingly ill and was living at home with his parents. In 1993, he died in Boston of an AIDS-related illness. In an interview, Edmund White, with whom James worked closely at Brown, called Hajira a remarkable novel. As long as we live, White said, we'll remember that book. I wrote this poem to honor James and his book and to mourn all the words and worlds that were lost when we lost him. He was one of the smartest, toughest, most gifted people I knew then or have known since. He died on the morning of his 31st birthday, March 25th, 1993. His novel remains unpublished. Broken World for James Asatley. Faith and rain, brightness falls. Blank as glass, brightness falls until he can't bend light anymore. Won't be stronger, won't be water, won't be dancing or floating berries. Won't be a year, won't be a song, won't be taller, won't be accounted a flame, won't be a boy, won't be any relation to the famous rebel. You are with me, and I shatter everyone who hates you. Arrows on water, you are with me. Rain on snow, and I shatter everyone who hates you. To be a man, to be, to try. I hate the word man. I'm not crazy about the word husband or the word father either. To try to heal the night or day. I'm busy selling fighters and bombers. The NASDAQ moves in my face. I'm wired to my greasy self-portrait. Every day in every way, America equals ghost. The wrong side of history, flat matted yellow weeds. Who could believe God chose me? Flat matted yellow weeds, God chose. You were dying that spring. Reading at some college, I saw Roxy boys and fatigues. The talkiness of winter unwraps me now. In each room, someone is fingering her or his soul. The talkiness of winter unwraps me now. The garden made unknowing by the snow. 
erased by snow, erased by snow. Two blocks from campus, a boy, maybe 10 or 11, yelled at a junior high school girl, ho bag, incest baby, spread your legs. It's all naked out here. Nothing is here. It's all one big strip mall. We have a Ponderosa. Faith in rain, brightness falls. Blank as glass, brightness falls. Won't be the magic lantern or dancer. Won't be, despite the fullness of time, the other three magic ones. Won't be a year, won't be a song, won't be a beginning, won't be forward, won't be on the way, won't be a dreary prison, won't be the month of May, won't be Mary, won't be the sea road, won't be stronger, won't be younger, won't be pink, won't be opening from under. The word, the word of God, the word of God in a plastic bag. I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear your voice. You are with me and I shatter everyone who hates you. Arrows on water, you are with me, rain on snow, and I shatter everyone who hates you. Faith in rain, brightness falls. Blank as glass, brightness falls. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Joseph. Blank as glass. But it captures light as well. Thank you so much, um, my, uh, Todd, Sheila, Megan, and of course, Joseph. And thank you, Joseph, especially for putting to, together the selection of amazing poets for this feature. Um, it, was a, it was an absolute wonderful reading. And uh, let's not forget, next week, we have the Slappering Hall show, with, which includes Margot Steva, Mervyn Taylor, Susan Cleary, and Anne Launtiger. And uh, on top of that, um, we, we will be kind of slow in the month of July, but there is an amazing show in July, which includes Hank Laser, Jake Marmer, Carly Hoffman, and Elizabeth Metzger. So please do join us for that. Um, and as of August, I think we'll go back to sort of normal uh, weekly shows. Um, and so I'm going to hand it over to Cassandra for our wonderful open mic tonight. Yeah, it was such a fabulous show. The featured writers were amazing. I always find it so inspiring when I hear such wonderful poetry and, and such wonderful words to, to go forward into my day, thinking about um, how I'm going to take on their, their kind of identities in poetry. It's beautiful. Um, but we have an amazing open mic. We're going to start with our favourite, John. John is always great in the open mic space, but I believe he's also doing his own reading that I'm sure he'll tell you about and perhaps put in the chat later this week. So I encourage you to go and see him because he's always so great. John. Thank you. Yes, I'm featuring at SpoFest this Tuesday. I'll po post a link in the chat. Also, okay. a shout out to my friend Christina Continelli, who is the coolest person in San Diego if not the world. Um, but I have, a pro I have a prose poem for you here today. Hooray, hooray, I'm excited. Uncle Stan's advice. This free range walk is all natural, hand forged from grass fed iron ore in a woman owned Bessemer converter in Wuhan, China. Serve with sides of cosines and quadratic equations. Mmm, kind of makes your gag or counter water, doesn't it? After a visit to the shoe store, isn't it time you painted that arc in the backyard? Those Nike sandals aren't going to tie themselves. And while you're at it, how about restocking the bomb shelter with pie tins and VHS tapes? When they drop the big one, trench coats and fedoras will be in short supply. So buy those deer antlers, oil rigs, and beaver tails when you still can. How about that boy of yours? He's been pestering you to take out the sodium iodide defector for years. Maybe spend a little less time grooving fiberglass at the post office and feign a token interest in your tadpoles. After the Fed hikes lending rates, you'll be glad you did. 
And that's why we love him. That's why he's always so brilliant in open mic and he's going to uh, post the details of his reading. I don't know whether I liked those Nike sandals aren't going to tie themselves more or maybe it was the served with signs and cosines because I always struggled in maths, even with a calculator that does those things for you. So thank you, John. That was a brilliant way to begin. Next, we have Linda. The inimitable Linda, can we please have you read one of your lovely, gorgeous poems? Okay, this one's a funny one, so we'll okay. find out how gorgeous it is. Okay, <laughs> it's loony with a question mark after it. So loony, I wanted to go. I ran out of time. No one really runs out of time unless they're dead. It was the loon place, you know, located within the Marcus Wildlife Center in New Hampshire. I read the brochure. I got the loon brochure from an information booth near Ware's Beach at Lake Winnipesaukee. The Loon Center, as it is referred to, is a 200 acre wildlife center, quite a distance from the information booth where I ran out of time, yet I was not dead. Now it's still on my bucket list waiting for another trip, another information booth, another life. I am adamant that I will get there. It's in Moultonboro, further north of Ware's Beach where I am reading about the loons. The nice thing to know is that the Loon Center, where I can learn all about loons, why their eyes are red, where they go in the winter, how deep loons dive, why their chicks ride on their parents' back, and the fact that loons are not ducks, will still be open until Indigenous Peoples Day, formerly known as Columbus Day. And I should note that I could still drive there before then, if I am not dead or run out of time. This would prevent my bucket list from overflowing with all the should haves, could haves, would haves that I have never found time to experience. Furthermore, I need to shop at the Loon Feather Shop, all things Loon and more. I'm not dead. I have not run out of time. I should get going. The Loons are calling me. Thank you. That was gorgeously playful. I loved it. I think everyone now has learning about loons on their bucket list. Um, if not, <laughs> making the excuse that no one really runs out of time until they're dead. So there's a cheery thought for a Sunday morning <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Linda. You. Next, we have Ronald. Come on down. Let's hear what you've got for us this week. Something amazing, I bet. I got two really short ones from my chapbook, Chambers. Um, since tomorrow is Juneteenth in the United States, uh, I'd like to read my tribute to Miles Davis. Miles runs the voodoo down. Miles boils his bitches brew in a night of worlds much blacker than black. His demons and angels let out slack for pharaohs dancing into the true. Miles runs the voodoo down and serves it up with a taste of free for those whose spirits would otherwise drown without such wild, mad sanctuary. And another short one uh, from GK, after GK Chesterton's book, The Paradise of Thebes, this is The Paradise of Thebes. You, a mosaic palace, rent with earthquakes. Me, a Dutch tulip garden, blown to the stars with dynamite. Us, the secret of the, secret of the volcano, the secret of the revolution, that a thing can be violent and yet fruitful. You, it's not my fault that you came. I, no, it's never your fault. It wasn't your fault that Troy fell. Thank you all. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I like to remind people it wasn't Cassandra's fault that Troy fell either. I think that was Helen's, but nevertheless, um, thank you so much. A taste of free is lovely. And I will always think of you as a Dutch tulip garden, Ron. Thank you so much. Um, we have two people left and I know you know who they are because they're always a powerhouse in the open mic. So we've got Cindy, badass poet Cindy, who always reads us something badass. I don't think, do you have your t-shirt on this week, Cindy? I'm not wearing the uh, badass shirt, but 
I think the poem is badass because it's a prose poem and oh, it's about it's the moon. And Perfect. The good part is everybody could sing along because it was published in Unbroken Journal. And, awesome. Uh, I like Unbroken because they do prose poems too, or part of that group does prose poems. Let me see if I can. Um, if I can find it, um, I'll do it very quickly. You can take in uh, Cindy's wonderful um, lounge, which is similarly famous to Bob's Kitchen. So, um, so we we do have huge affection for people's backgrounds in this uh, in this Zoom. Okay, I think that I can put it in to you. If you want to read along. Awesome. Thank you. I see it there. Wanton Moon. Let's begin by revealing the machinations of the moon, her sources and methods, her barefaced shenanigans, hiding behind a veneer of buff colored virtue while spinning narratives from the whole cloth of the spurious sky. Tonight, the moon is all ruddy-faced and duplicitous, a rude and promiscuous bride, sullying the celestial dead as she swallows you and winks down at us. Thank you. <laughs> That's our Cindy. She's amazing. I love a shenanigan here and there. So thank you so much. And our, our last reader in open mic, you know, I've said many times how much I love Bob and his kitchen, but mostly I love the way that Bob is able to close the open mic for us with something that makes me think about the way that perhaps he sees the world for the rest of my day. So um, I'm I'm leaving it up to you, Bob, to tell you to tell me how the rest of my day is going to go. Are you reading information today or something else? Yes, information. Excellent. Excellent. But an All older right. piece that actually Cindy and Karen for first published in their publication. Oh, so. nice. Beautiful. So. Thank you. Thank you to both of, them, both of them for publishing. Information. Each new language began with a mistake, a word misheard or misspelled, a phrase that pointed in the wrong direction, a speaker who became the spoken about a color that became too deep to climb out of, a structure that was too parallel to ever be counted, an animal that was mistaken for a pronoun, a woman whose location could not be described. That was scintillating. So much there, so much for my day. It's amazing to close the open mic with Bob in his kitchen. Thank you, Bob. You never disappoint. Thank you. Thank you. And back to Mark for some closing words. Well, thank you. Well, thanks, of course, Joseph, for setting up this amazing show. Um, and thank you for your readers, Megan, Todd, and Sheila. Fantastic tonight. Um, next week, we have the Slappering Hole show, which includes Mar Margot Steva, Mervyn Taylor, Suzanne Cleary, and Anne Launiger. And then after that, um, we have a little break. I think it's uh, two weeks, right? Um, I don't know, but guess what, people? I'm in Rome and Madrid, so think of me there. But that, that day on July 23, we'll be hearing from Hank Laser, Jake Marmer, Carly Hoffman, and Elizabeth Metzger. And to close this show tonight, um, I'm going to read a little poem um, that I translated from the German from Klaus Metz's selected poems which is coming out from White Time Press very soon. This is called Closing Sail. Still fluttering on the balcony, the winter skin of the previous year, your yellowed frock of metaphors. Time to take it down before the first snow falls, the snow that fills those pockets with cold. And welcome to summer, folks. Thank you so much. Love, love this reading. Enjoyed every word of it and lots of love and poetry. See you on the flip side. 
um, yeah, let's hope the world is a better place by then. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cassandra. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joseph. See thank you, you soon. Thank you very much. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joseph. Bye.